tuning in. Today I'm going to work on another set of dragon skin coasters. Can you tell that's one of my favorite styles to do? <laughs> um, I'm going to try a different color combination than I've ever done before. So today I'm going for fall colors. Fall's coming up. I hate to say it. It's late August right now and I'm starting to work on stuff for my new um, shop that's opening up October 1st so I'm trying to get inventory ready and of course that's fall season so that's what I'm working on tonight. So um, as usual I have four colors that I'm going to use in this pour and what I've pulled out is this mica powder from Artisan it's called Golden Sand. It's um, It's just a nice gold color but it's not that metallic gold that you've seen me use in other um, videos. This is just, just a basic gold mica. But I do have a metallic gold as well. This is the Perlex Brilliant Gold. So this is that very rich metallic gold mica. And I've used this in some of my other videos. So I'm using these two golds. I don't know if it's gonna make a difference having the two. This one is a lot lighter. It tends to float more and this one tends to sink. So I'm curious to see if I get any kind of reactions like that. Then for a darker color, I'm using Mixol. This is the dark brown tint. It's color number 23. And this is just a really, really nice brown. Just a slightly on the reddish side. They have another brown, but it's a little bit more on the greenish side. So I thought that would look good with these golds. And then I'm using the Mixol White number 25. So that'll be my white today. So I have four cups with two ounces in each for my four colors. And then I have four ounces of clear that I'm going to use um, just as clear. So that's what I've got going on here. So I'm going to mix up my colors. If you want to fast forward through this part, feel free. You know, a lot of people don't like watching the mixing part, but if you want to see exactly the quantities that I use, then you'll want to watch this part. <laughs> so for the white in two ounces, I want this to be opaque. So I'm going to start with 15 drops. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I usually do like 10 drops in one ounce. So I might need to add a little bit more. Um, but we'll start with 15. You can always add more to it. It's going to give this a good stir. Oh my gosh, it is like 95 degrees and humid today. My air conditioning is running nonstop. Oh, it's about, it's almost 80 degrees in my house. Um, it's 79 in here right now. So... Luckily, it's early evening, so it should be cooling off overnight. So I don't think I'll have any problems with anything curing. I haven't had any trouble, even though it has gotten to, you know, high 70s, almost 80 in my studio. I haven't had trouble with anything curing or leaving like a blush on the surface. Fingers crossed. Today is probably the worst day yet for humidity and heat. <laughs> So I'm just hoping it doesn't affect how they cure, but I will find out tomorrow for sure. All right, just trying to see. I'm gonna add five more drops. So yeah, with this Mixol, if you want um, just a nice opaque white, 10 drops per ounce. That's what seems to work best for me. I was hoping to get by with a few less drops but I guess not. <laughs> These mix all colorants just blend so nicely into resin. Oh, for my resin today, I'm using the Naked Fusion Artist Resin. It's a one-to-one. -one. I use that quite a bit. I have a few different resins I use, but that's one of my main staples. All right, so I have not used this brown before, and I want this to be um, 
it doesn't have to be completely opaque, but I want it to be dark. So I'm going to start with five and just see where that goes. Whenever you're mixing color, you always want to make sure you're scraping your cup, the sides, the bottom, just to make sure it's mixed all the way in. There's so many times I think I've mixed it all the way and I have not. All right, so that is pretty transparent. I'm gonna add five more drops. It's starting to thunder out. I don't know if it's gonna rain or not. I hope it does. Maybe that'll get the humidity out of here. But hopefully my power won't go out in the middle of making this tutorial. <laughs> that almost happened one night when I was doing a tutorial. It was thundering and luckily I managed to get it done before the power went out. So I got my fingers crossed. <laughs> Okay, I think that looks pretty good. It's still semi-transparent, but it's still got a nice dark color brown to it. All right, so now to the Artisan Mica, the Golden Sand. I'm just going to do one scoop. Should have mixed the micas first. I usually try to mix the mica powder first to give it a minute to sit while I'm mixing the other colors in case I don't have it mixed all the way then it it'll float to the top if there's any little bits of powder that I missed. I usually mix my mica first. <laughs> I just forgot tonight. It's just a nice almost like a butterscotch color. Super pretty. Micas, you have to mix a little bit more than some other colorants just to make sure that powder is all the way mixed in. If you don't mix it all the way and you pour it, you're going to end up with little bits of powder on the mold side of your design. So if the mold side's the bottom of your coaster, that may not be the end of the world. But in this case, the mold side's actually going to be the top of my coaster. I definitely want this mixed thoroughly. It's got a nice iridescence to it. All right, that's that gold, golden sand. All right, and then the Pearl X. I'm gonna do the same amount, just one scoop. Now this mica is a lot lighter in weight. You can, you can even feel the weight difference, um, at least I can when I scoop it. And then this mica tends to want to float a little bit more in the pour. So we'll see what happens. The colors are very, very similar. It may not make any difference at all. Colors are, <laughs> they look almost identical. But that's okay. Every pour is an experiment, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I 
keep saying I want to do one with uh, copper and green. I just have not found the time, but that's another good fall combination. So I'm probably going to try and do a set of those for fall. Got lots of cool things coming up that I'm going to be working on to get my shop open. I'm going to be doing some tumblers. I've got some clocks coming down the pike. Um, well, let me show you this really quick. I screwed this up and I have to try and fix it so I can't finish it just yet. But look at that. This is a sculpted panel. It's just a wooden sculpted panel I got from Bear Woods. And I painted it and I poured in it, but I was stupid and I didn't use any mold release on this edge piece and I can't get it off. So I've got to try and uh, heat this up and remove it and then do a lot of sanding before I can put my top coat on it. But this is going to be a clock and I am in the middle of this tutorial <laughs> and I'm to the step where I got to take this off and I'm like, ah! so I got to work on that. But that's... Um, one of the things that I'm going to be putting in my store, I'm going to have a bunch of different designs. I got several different sculpted panels for that, and I have a million ideas of, um, you know, different colors to use on them and different things to do with those. So I have those coming up. Um, I've got some ceramic pieces I'm going to be pouring on. I'm going to be doing some more of those freeform vases. So I have a lot and I'm gonna be doing tutorials for a lot of that stuff. So it's gonna be a very busy month getting everything ready. I'm so excited though. I used to own a little gift store years ago. No, not years ago, two years ago. It <laughs> feels like forever ago. Um, so I'm, uh, but I didn't do resin back then. So this will be my first time doing retail with resin. Okay, all right, so we're ready to pour. So before I pour, um, you see I've got these cups sitting here. I'm actually gonna get the next batch of resin mixing while I pour this. I have a mixer off to the side. Um, so I'm gonna get this resin going and then I'll be right back. So there's the resin on the mixer. Let's see it spinning away there. Um, so by the time I'm done pouring these coasters, these will be pretty much ready to go. I'll just have to give them maybe 30 seconds more hand stirring, but it's amazingly useful. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> got that going, so let's get to pouring. All right, so I am going to start with the clear as I always do. And then, oh, I don't know if you all can see. Can you see there's some flakes of, of mica sitting on the top? Just a couple, there's one over here. There's a couple over here. But anyways, this is why I like to let it sit for a minute um, before I pour when I'm using mica powder because if it's not mixed all the way it'll float up to the top and then you'll know before you pour. This one doesn't have any of those issues. Oh, my lighting is so bad. Um, this one's got a little more of that metallic sheen to it but no flakes on top. Okay, so like I was saying, clear first, then this mica. Then I'm gonna do the dark brown. I'm gonna do the white and then the gold mica. So that's gonna be my first layer. And then I'll have to think about what I'm gonna do for my second layer. <laughs> uh, I don't always plan these too far ahead. Let me just move these guys out of my way. So I've got four ounces in this cup and I 
need to do two layers of the clear. So I'm gonna to try to use about half of it total right now and save the other half for my second trip through. Got some little debris in that one. All right, so I'm gonna try and do these all about the same amount of clear. And I wanna end up with about two ounces left. It's got a smidge over two ounces, just like a little tiny hair. So you look like you could use a bit more. All right, so that's a good start there for the clear. And then same thing, I'm gonna to try to use about half of each of these in this first go round. So I'm just gonna start with a small amount. I can always come back in with a little bit more. gold almost looks like egg yolk. Not quite as yellow. That's why I went with a dark brown with this gold because I think it'll hopefully I'm hoping it kind of tames that yellow side of it. I'm gonna add just, just not quite halfway yet, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more. I'm trying to pour in the center. As you can see, I'm not doing the best job of that. <laughs> this one's pretty centered. They will end up, um, for the most part, flowing to the center pretty well. You can be off a little bit. This one is the worst that I'm off. So there might be a little bit of a gap on this side where some of the color is a little bit different. Not a gap, but a, an area where the color is just a bit different. But the other three will probably, be, probably look um, very much the same. real important when you do this style of coaster that you have a level table. I just have a little level, it's about this long, and I just lay it on my board and I've got, I think I have a popsicle stick under one of these sides just to raise it up a little because my table is not perfectly level. metallic gold. It pours a little different than the other gold. I don't know how much attention you pay to how things pour, but I can kind of feel a difference how it's actually coming out of the cup. It feels mm, 
smoother. I don't know how else to describe that, but that's kind of the feeling I'm getting here. All right, so let me hit these with the heat gun. So I'm not really trying to move the colors around. I'm just popping bubbles with the heat gun um, when I do the dragon skin. Okay, so let's think about next. So I think next I'm going to do, I'm just going to swap those two, I think. Do the dark, then this gold, then the white, and end with that gold. So I get a lot of questions as to why I use all these different colors. Um, you know, if you would get the same kind of reaction if you just used mica powder. And you would get a similar effect, but when you use um, colors that have different weights, they tend to fall through each other and create some pretty unique things. So I don't know if you would get the exact same look. You know, for example, if I only used the gold, golden sand, gold sand, mica and clear, I don't, I don't think I would because you need this dark color to kind of fall through the mica so that there's like dark crackles in there. The white is heavy and it's gonna push it down and the white and the gold together seem to create some kind of a reaction. It almost looks like bubbles, but it's not bubbles, but it creates like this, um, this texture. So yes, you can absolutely get a dragon skin effect with just mica because I've done that. I've even got some videos on my channel where I've done that, where I've poured just mica around the edge and you get like those, those dragon skin crackly edges, but you don't get the interesting mixture that happens when you combine different colors and different um, colorants. So the mix all white is amazing for how it reacts with resin and other colors. So I love to include that when I'm doing this kind of a pour. Um, I love to include pigment pastes with with a mica. You know, one one cup might have a pigment paste and one might have a mica. You always need a mica um, to really get the crackle. But um, really having those different weights and different colors gets you the best kind of dragon skin, in my opinion. <laughs> but everybody likes different things. So I would say experiment. If you don't have a ton of colors, and maybe you just have mica, just try it with mica. I've done some pours with two different colors of mica, and it's really fun how they blend together. So just try things. There's no harm in trying and there's no really such thing as failing because there's always something to learn. So even if the pour doesn't end up exactly how you picture it in your head, which happens to me all the time, trust me, there's a lot of videos you guys do not see <laughs> because the result is like, ah! Um, but I always learn something from it. So it's still valuable and then I take what I learn and I use it in my next pour and then in my next pour. And then eventually I get to where I feel confident enough in sharing my knowledge that I can put a video together. But there's, there's videos on my channel where I've made mistakes or things don't turn out exactly how I envisioned. And that's okay because, you know, we're all learning. So don't ever feel bad about learning. 
or being a beginner. Don't ever feel bad about that. Everybody starts somewhere. My resin's starting to get thick. But it's still pouring pretty well. Starting to see some really cool things happening around the edges. It's finally reached the edges and starting to come back towards the center now. And then the last part here is the clear. And this is gonna just push everything out to the sides. And it just helps kind of with every with the movement that's needed for this design. For this to happen, things must move. try and level make sure they're all about the same depth So I'm gonna bring the camera down in a second. I'll give you a close up of what's going on here. And then I will also come back in about 20, 30 minutes and show you how everything's changed because it's gonna change quite a bit in the space of a half hour. Everything's gonna move. And if this is where you um, stop watching, some people don't watch to the end, because they've already seen the pictures. Um, but if this is where you tune out, thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and share. For the rest of you, I will be back shortly to show you, um, or I'm gonna give you a close up first. <laughs> One second. at that that is just just amazing I can't get enough of resin those are rings all that movement around the edge so pretty how the brown and the gold are blending so yeah everything is going to continue moving towards the center and um, like I said I'll come back in about 20 minutes or so and show you the progress so see you in a bit oh all right guys, it's been about 20 minutes or so and just wanted to give you an update to show you how these are closing up. So I'm gonna say in another 20 minutes, they'll probably be almost all the way closed. They might be about the size of a quarter left open in the center. But you can see all of the amazing reactions that are going on in there. And that is from using all those different types of colorants the white the two different golds you get those unique reactions from that so all right so i will see you guys tomorrow to unmold these all right it has been about oh i don't know 15 hours or so and they're nice secured you can see the um circles closed up a little bit bigger than the size of a quarter 
And this is the one that I said might have something kind of weird on the side because I poured it way off center. <laughs> so that's what happened, but it's on the back. So we'll see what the front looks like. So I'm eager to get these demolded. Right, it's a little bit transparent, and there we go. Some nice crackling going on. Definitely very gold, which is kind of what I thought might happen because I was using two shades of gold. And then you can see on this edge, because like I said, I was off center when I poured, so it it kind of rolled up the edge a little bit just right there but i like it it gives it a unique look and i love the edges on these they always end up with some interesting effects going on all right so this one looks perfect on the back i think this is the one that i did really well as far as getting everything centered when i was pouring <laughs> So it's pretty uniform. The rim is pretty uniform. It's a little thinner on this side, but not bad. Looks good. All right, this one's got some stuff going on here. We'll see if that transfers over to the front side. Oh, yeah. That one's got a big, um, I don't know what to call that, but... <laughs> Just a big spot of white on the front and then lots of deep crackles right here. And you, I don't know how well the camera's picking up, but there's two different colors of gold right there. That looks really neat. And even a little bit of clear right along this edge. So this one flowed differently. So that's a, this one's really cool. And then this one, it's almost like a, peacock feather right there. So this one's got a nice rim and then it kind of blends a little bit there. So they're all very different. These two are kind of similar and then these two both have a little bit going on on the edge. <laughs> so let's come in for a close up. Hard with my lights. There's so much glare. So we didn't get a lot of crackling. More crackling around the edge than in the center on these. It's kind of a softer effect, but it still looks pretty. And I think it's because um, I didn't pour immediately after I mixed the resin. It sat for a little bit. Let me just grab these other ones here. So this is a set I did, or this is one from a set I did, that I poured immediately. You can see a big difference in the crackles. If you compare the two. So I think that makes a huge difference. Even just letting your resin sit, this was probably maybe a 10 minute difference between the two. So that's a good lesson that you get more crackles when your resin is fresh. So, alrighty, well there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And as always, please hit that subscribe button, click the little bell so you get notifications. And I will see you next time.